In my dream, I see the line of harbingers start with Iskramora. Each of them ascends to Sovngarde until we come to Terfig, who first turned us to the ways of the beast. He tries to enter Sovngarde, but before he can even approach Tsun, he is set upon by a great wolf who pulls him into the hunting grounds, where Hirsin laughs with welcoming arms. Terfig seems regretful, but also eager to join Hirsin after a lifetime of service as a beast. Then I see every next harbinger turn away from Sovngarde and enter the hunting grounds of their own accord, until it comes to me, and I see great Tsun on the misty horizon beckoning me. It appears I have a choice, and then, at my side, a stranger I had not seen before. As I look into her eyes, we turn to see the same wolf who dragged away Terfig, and she and I draw weapons together. I realize this is only a dream, but a strong enough dream to inspire a man like me to take to writing, so it must be of some import. I've spoken of my thoughts to the circle, withholding the part about the stranger lest skewer worry I will no longer seek his counsel, and I was not surprised to see them torn by it. Skior and Ayela are strong in the ways of the beast, and even seem to suggest that the hunting grounds would be their choice of afterlife, if it were truly a choice. Vilkis seemed most troubled. The boy is as fierce as a saber cat in battle, but his heart's fire burns too brightly at times. He felt deceived, and I don't blame him. Farkas didn't know what to think but I believe he will come around with me and his brother eventually. He usually does. I don't know what to do about Skior and Ayala. I know they respect the companions and me, but they take to the blood more deeply than the rest of us. Fortune smiles upon us. Yesterday, Vilkis was telling me how difficult it had been for him to give up his transformations. Until we can pursue a true cure, the twins and I have chosen not to give in to the beast blood. For me, it's provided a clearer head, but Vilkis seems to be suffering a bit for it. Farkas seems completely untroubled. That boy continues to amaze with his fortitude. While Vilkis was confiding, through the shadows of Yorvaskar, I saw a newcomer approach, who wished to join our numbers. It was the stranger from my dream, the one who would stand with me against the beast. Vilkis began speaking obliquely, not wishing to air our problems in front of our guest, and I had to be doubly cautious not to reveal anything of our secrets to the newcomer, while also not revealing the details of my dream to Vilkis. I don't know how the politicians deal with these sorts of machinations daily. In any case, I've sent Vilkis to test the newcomer. We'll see if she is truly the great warrior I dreamt of. This newcomer, it seems, is made of decent stock. She calls herself Violet and has already impressed some of the circle with her metal. I still keep my own counsel on her place in my dream, for now. Let us see what kind of destiny she is carving before hitching to her. In the meanwhile, I look for ways of cleansing my blood. The writings and legends on the subject are sparse and contradictory. I don't wish to engage any wizardry on this matter, but I fear they may be the only ones who best know how to navigate these worlds of knowledge. It's apparent to me now that Terrific's choice to turn us was indeed a mistake. Magics and their ilk are not in keeping with the spirit of the Companions. We face our problems directly, without the needs of such trickery. I can only hope to guide us back to the true path of Iskramor before the rot takes me. Violet continues to impress. I don't know yet where she will stand on the question of the blood, but the question has not been presented yet. She does know that we carry the beast blood and appears curious about it. Soon enough, I can explain our troubles and hopefully see what role she will play. I'm amazed that Ayala thinks she can keep a secret among this drunken rabble. Especially with the loss of Skior, my heart aches. Emotions are fraying, and the walls of discretion are the first to fall. 
Apparently, she and Violet are waging their own separate war against the Silverhand in retaliation for Skior's death. Their hearts are noble, but the course of vengeance is running hot, and I fear the counterstroke that may come if they do not rein in their fury. Violet shows valor, though, even in this more underhanded time. We have not had cause to speak much, and that is something I deeply regret. I have high hopes for her destiny, as I realized that her appearance in my dream may indeed mark her as the harbinger to succeed me. I have received few dreams over the course of my life, but when they come, I have learned to trust them. I have also learned to trust the instincts of my heart, which tells me that Violet can carry the Companion's legacy as truly as any residing in Yorvaskar, especially with the loss of Skior. Ayala is too solitary, Vilkis too fiery, and Farkas too kind-hearted. Only Violet stands as a true warrior who can keep a still mind amidst these burning hearts. I will not speak to her of any of this, though. It is too much to burden another with. My hope is that she and I can keep counsel over the coming years, that I can impart the wisdom of the Harbingers. All things in time. Firstly, I will seek her assistance in the matter of the Witches of Glenmoral. It would appear that our path to the cure is not without some poetic justice for the tricksters who first cursed us. <laughs>